In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to bake my turbot on basque potatoes with the sauce that every seafood cook wants to know how to do, a seafood bisque sauce. Let's get cooking. So the first thing we're gonna get on with is the bisque sauce. I've kept the shells that we had from leftover from prepping the crab. Um, you don't have to use just crab, you can use lobster bones, you can use prawns if you haven't got these either, but essentially you need, in a good bisque, some seafood. Right, the other things I've got is shallots, fennel, celery, tomatoes, peppers, and then we've got a few spices. We've got our saffron, star anise, fennel seeds, um, chili flakes, some orange and orange zest, some tarragon, and then, all importantly, the roast fish stock. So the first thing you need to do is get a nice heavy bottom pan on a medium heat and then add some neutral sunflower or light rapeseed oil. You don't need to use olive oil in something like this. And get that nice and hot. The first thing that's gonna go in will be the shallots, the fennel, and the celery. So that's probably about one shallot. two sticks of celery, and half a fennel bulb. And what we're looking for with something like this, and it is very important, is to pay attention to cooking the vegetables. What we're after is soft vegetables that have released all the sweetness, but also getting a little bit of color on there. Try not to burn the vegetables. The resulting burnt vegetable will give you a bitterness to your sauce. So just sweat those off. And now I've got some red pepper. It's about half a red pepper. And then a couple of good ripe tomatoes. There's a pinch of sea salt. And what the salt will do, it will just start to draw out the sweetness from the vegetables. And I think it helps everything sort of start to mingle together. So just keep an eye on them. The heat that we're looking to cook on is a medium heat, not a high heat. So you're just gonna cook those for a few minutes, making sure they don't catch too much. And what you're looking for is them to start to soften and just catch at the edges. So the vegetables have been cooking for about three or four minutes now. They're just starting to catch at the edges and that's what I'm looking for. That tells me that all the sugars are starting to come out of the vegetables and that'll give us a nice sweetness to the sauce. So once you've got that, next thing we do is gonna add the shells. So we've got all the shells that are left over from picking the crab. Now as I said before, if you haven't got any shells from picking crab, you can use, uh, you know, Prawns will work very well. Give those shells a good stirring with the vegetables. Make sure they get nice and covered and they start to cook as well. Next thing we're gonna add is the spices. So here I've got some saffron. A good bisque should always have some saffron in it. It's one of those flavours that is uh, sort of almost, almost like quite a dominant flavour in a good bisque. A few star anise. That's going to give the sauce a nice anise, sort of almost like perno y flavour. Some fennel seeds. Beautiful with seafood. And then just a little kick from some dried chilies. Give that all a stir in. It smells great. Okay, once the spices are all stirred in, 
The next thing that will go in, we've got some, just a dessert spoon of tomato puree. And that's gonna help us with the color of the sauce. We've got some orange zest. A little bit of orange juice from one orange. And then there's a couple of garlic cloves. They've just been crushed. At this point, you start to get the smell in your kitchen of like what a true bisque is all around about. Shellfish, vegetables, spices, sweetness, the orange coming through. The sort of smells that make you really want to cook. The next thing you're going to add is some white wine. A large glass or two. And then finally, we got our roasted fish stock. So the, the roasted fish stock I slightly brought to the temperature, so it was just simmering when I added to it. At this point, bring the whole thing to the boil. Skim off any scum from the top, any impurities and then just put it to one side on a low simmer and cook it for half an hour. So the next part of the dish is making the baked potatoes. The potatoes, I call, in our kitchen we call them Basque potatoes. I'm not sure they're traditional in a sense, apart from the fact that when I've been to San Sebastian, you always get served sliced potatoes with peppers and onions through them. So it's sort of inspired by a trip to San Sebastian. So, for the record, we're going to call them Basque potatoes, but it's essentially sliced potatoes with onions, peppers and garlic through it. So the first thing you need to do is to get a pan on, on sort of a medium heat, a frying pan or a saucepan will work, and we're just going to sweat off the onions and the peppers. So again, a little bit of sunflower oil, just to get things going. This is actually a dish where you could use olive oil, because uh, keeping it authentic, that's what they would do in Spain. But I'm just going to use a little bit of sunflower oil, to cook off these onions. So here I've got some sliced onion, just half a small, half a large onion or one small onion. One red pepper sliced. And then I've got some chopped garlic, one clove. pinch of salt and a few turns of the cracked pepper. And what we're looking for is just to soften these onions and peppers down. It will take three or four minutes. A little bit of colour won't, won't hurt, but essentially you just want them softened down to just take that rawness away. So the peppers and onions have just been sweated down with the garlic and they're starting to, to colour up a little bit. Now at this stage I need to add some acidity to the dish. So what I've got here is a little bit of white wine. I'm going to splash over the top. And that just brings the sort of light, lovely wine acidic flavour to the whole thing. And then just turn the heat off and leave them to one side while we slice the potatoes. So to slice the potatoes I use a mandolin. You can use a sharp knife. What I'm going to do is just take a nice potato like this. It's almost like a, like a, a Maris Piper or a baking potato will work perfectly for this. I'm going to have washed it and then I'm just going to slice it with the skin on. So be careful with your fingers.
And then I'm going to I'm going to do this in two little individual dishes. But if you're at home and you wanted to make a you know, a bigger portion, you could use a big sort of um, oven proof dish. But I quite like it. You know, as if we'd serve it in the restaurant with a little portion of potatoes, the fish on top, and then it gets baked in the oven. So I'm just going to layer them up. And you can make this as rustic or as refined as you want. I'm taking quite nice slices of potato like this. But if you wanted to, you could cut them out with a cutter and you could make them look all pretty. But, you know, for me, I like to have a little bit of authenticity in the dish. And this is how I've seen them when I've been uh, traveling around Spain. So just add the potatoes in one layer. And then we take some of the peppers and onions that are now softened down. And then one more layer of potatoes. At this stage, I put a little bit of salt and pepper. And then we go one more layer of the onions and peppers. A knob of butter or two and then just finish it off with another layer of the potato. And before you put that final slice on, you can get a little bit of the fish stock. Inside there. That's probably about two tablespoons. And then finally, on top, and then push everything down. And that's ready for the oven. I'm gonna get on with one more. We're gonna bake these in an oven at 200 degrees and they'll take about half an hour to 40 minutes. So your base for the bisque sauce has now been cooking for half an hour. So what we need to do is now strain that off and then start to reduce it down rapidly. So I'm just gonna take the pan that I used for the fish stock. So we're gonna get the pan onto a high heat. And we're gonna strain the base of the bisque into that pan. So be careful at this stage because you are going to have to lift the whole pan over the top. And just sieve all the vegetables and all the shells out of that. And then we're going to bring that up to the boil and then we're going to cook it quickly and rapidly to reduce whatever quantity of liquid you've got by half. So the base of the bisque sauce has now come down by half. So that's a really important thing. Whatever your yield is with the stock to start with, you reduce it by half exactly. Okay, so the next thing we need to add to it is some tarragon. The tarragon is just, stalks and all, just gonna go in there. 
And this is because I love that sort of tarragon and nice flavor to my bisque sauce. So that goes in and then we got some double cream, a lot of double cream. And then a few knobs of butter as well. At this point, you want to simmer this for five minutes, but you just want to turn it down because once the cream's in there, it can boil over. So just turn your stove down to about halfway. Whilst that's just coming together, I'm going to get the potatoes out of the oven. So the potatoes have now been cooking for about half an hour. So just keep an eye on your, on your bisque sauce as it comes together with the cream. I've turned that right down now. Depending on the strength of your stove, you know, sometimes you just gotta be careful with that. Just keep an eye. Make sure you keep your eye on that sauce and it doesn't boil over. So the potatoes have been cooking for half an hour. We've got a nice little bit of color, which is what I wanted. And the stock and the fish stock that I put in there with the starch and the butter has made almost like a sauce in there as well. So, I've got two pieces of turbot, which have been out of the, um, of the fridge for a good hour. And the reason why I do that is quite a thick piece of fish, you know, and you want it to come to a sort of a temperature where you know the heat's gonna get all the way through it and cook evenly. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt. And also some pepper. And then I'm just gonna lay that fish on top of the potatoes, just like that. Okay. Now, just gonna, as we're cooking dishes that are a restaurant standard, I'm gonna do something that gives it a nice little finish, which is just a slice of lemon to sit on top of the fish. So just lay the lemon on top, a pinch more salt, and then a good knob of butter. Now that's gonna go back in the oven now for about five minutes. And the residual heat from the potatoes and the heat of the oven is gonna cook that quite quickly, so just keep an eye on it. So the fish has been cooking for five minutes. And as you can see, as you can see, it's beautifully cooked. Now at this stage, the best thing to do when you take them out of the oven is just to leave them for a few minutes just to rest and let all them sort of fish juices and the lemon and mix with all the butter from the potatoes. So I'm just gonna plate this one up. You'll need to use your cloth for this one because it's come straight out of the oven. I'm going to finish that off with a little bit of chopped parsley. And then the bisque has now come down to a beautiful consistency. And the way I like to serve it is to put the bisque sauce into a jug. And then just pour it over the top. And there you have it. That's my turbot seafood bisque on basque potatoes.